You ever just sit down at your computer, looking down in shame, wondering to yourself, Hey, when did my dick get this big? Is it because I stopped watching porn? I wonder why you I stopped watching porn! Then you look down and see a puddle of blood all on the floor and your cat belly up with a gaping hole in its bottom while your pants are down. You ever just sit there and go, Hey, wait a minute, I would never fuck a cat. But fucking dogs are a different story. Why did I stop doing it? Out of your confusion, did you ever go buy a flashlight from Amazon, specifically the Pocket Pussy Male Masturbators Cup Adult Sex Toys Realistic Texture Demonetized Video Masturbation Stroker for like $20? And did you ever start thinking to yourself, Hey, that looks pretty good. As you prepare for the long sexual ride ahead, you unzip your pants. Unbuckle your belt. Yeah, yeah, you're a fucking monster if you do it in that order, by the way. And you pull your pants down to your knees. And just as soon as you're about to beat your dirty little fucking womb broom into an oblivion, you stop. And you think to yourself, Hey, why is this stupid fucking bird looking at me like that? stopped watching anime, didn't I? Uh, why'd I do that? MILF SEKAI That's the answer. MILF SEKAI MILF SEKAI MILF SEKAI Ah. That's why I stopped doing that. I've been wanting to discuss, and by discuss I mean aimlessly ramble to a non-existent audience about, is my complete and utter disinterest in the majority of current anime as a whole. Some of you may be thinking, wait a fucking minute, I get that you're salty and a fucking hipster, but not even you are dumb enough to question the complexity and absurd surplus mm. amount of modern day classics uh -huh. that began in the winter up to yeah. this point which uh -huh. showcase the medium's ability to evolve with times alongside a constant <laughs> addiction to subversion of the now popular but once recondite yeah. sekai genre. Hey, that has spawned a look, massive amount of anime look. fans which hey, bolsters the culture hey, you know and increases revenue for not only creators in Japan but also the American uh -huh, populace as uh -huh. Crunchyroll is owned yeah, by. I watch three of these all a year. I like this one. And this one's pretty cool too. Now, any reasonable person, and when I say that I am implying that by not thinking this way you are indeed being unreasonable, would probably question if you've only really watched and liked two anime out of about 150 all year, then why the hell are you making a video about anime? Why do you even bother talking about the medium? Are, are you, you lonely? lonely? Why, yes, I am lonely, which probably explains my chronic masturbation problem. Everything is okay. Your clitoris won't fall off. Why am I making a video about anime if I've been so unimpressed by it in recent times? That's a very good question, to which my answer is the main point of this video. Boom! AKA Culture, specifically the Eve album known by that name. Who the hell is Eve? Eve is in Utahite. Utahite wa nan desu they typically covered over Vocaloid songs, but at this point, Eve basically creates all of his own music and doesn't really fall into that category much anymore, which I'm completely okay with, you know, because most of his compositions are usually better than anyone he could bother covering anyways, but that's besides the point. The connection of these utaites to Vocaloid and Miku, Japan's digital J-pop mascot who has taken many forms as the embodiment of Japanese pop culture, is heavily associated with anime. Consequently, songs by these utaite, Vocaloid or not, are almost always connected to anime imagery or oftentimes just flat out anime themselves. So while I can't bring myself to watch and care about a studio produced 12 episode school slice of life or a 
24 episode shonen, I've very easily spent hours upon hours analyzing music videos from the composition of the songs to more relevant to this video, analyzing the use of anime imagery in them. Music videos, despite their extremely short length in most cases, can pack so much damn thematic substance that I never find myself getting bored of them, and their personal connection invoked by the singer giving life to these characters via melody and sharp literary devices results in an immersion that more often than not leaves me questioning my general perspective on life. These songs and videos make me question the people I meet and judgments I make about them. I question ideas of perseverance depicted far more viscerally and emotionally raw than any Boku no Hero episode or movie could ever wish to. I begin to understand dealing with loss, grief, depression, and man has that last one specifically been a mainstay throughout my life. I find that oftentimes I've found hope in not just life but anime as well through an audio based medium that only initially intended on using its anime connections for the sake of very simple visualizations, cover art, or profit. But the more I watch these music videos, the more I feel I learn about the world and myself. The more I watch, the more I become intertwined with the worlds they create and the characters they introduce me to. The more I watch, the more I realize my literal view of the world, what I actually see, is seen by someone other than myself. And while pragmatically that doesn't really do much for me, I sense that it puts my subconscious and hypersynical personality at ease. Somebody else can perceive the sun's beams as this sharp, dark, draining, depressing cloud over their heads on their everyday walk to work, the gym, the school, etc. Someone else understands that cloud is perceived by most people as a beautiful embodiment of energy in a social life. They revel and make their connections under it in true happiness, and that's something I never have and probably never will truthfully understand. Someone else understands the draining nature of inauthentically dealing with others in everyday interactions, and they feel the fatigue and the large sensation of emotional hollowness it leaves you with, the apathy it leaves you with to everyone. Someone else has experienced this feeling of living in a place that lacks ambition and a lust for knowledge. A place that's entirely too complacent in their good living and their current outlook on the world. Someone else understands my failure to get out of this place will result in me feeding depression's insubservient appetite with a meal that will permanently remove me from the beast's menu and move someone else straight to the top of it. Someone else understands I need to escape that place, and that opportunity isn't one that will last long, because I need someone to help me out of that place, and no relationship lasts forever. Someone else understands that I've met that person, and that they're far, far, far out of my reach now. Somebody else understands finding someone you connect to far too late, before you can make a significant impact on their life from the shadows, so that they may live for the better but not credit you for it. That credit again only breeds a connection that hurts more to inevitably cut than to never establish in the first place. Somebody else blames themselves for the unfortunate loss of a life or a spirit of a person they know they should have talked to or impacted. Somebody else knows what it's like attempting to climb the staircase to an objectively better future. One filled with financial prosperity never experienced in the younger stages of their life. They know what it feels like getting kicked on your ass and rolling down into a pit of spikes screaming your head off, and realizing that screaming doesn't stop the cycle. One more time, that person says as they again attempt to break the cycle and climb the staircase. Somebody acknowledges the limits of the human spirit and the mind's inability to handle that constant pain and failure over and over and over again. Someone else knows that eventually the inability to handle that pain will be the cause of a life lost, again, to the insatiable beast that is depression. Somebody else accurately termed my general experience with life as a dramaturgy. They understand that the real me is quite the devil. The real me hurts people and usually doesn't feel any shame. The real me is an indecisive hypocrite who claims they aim to be a savior of the people and one everyone can look up to and befriend, and that same me proceeds to wear a mask and go about manipulating people in situations to my benefit. The real me hates small talk, 
and pointless interactions, yet he loves playing the game that is life, that is chock full of these experiences. The real me doesn't care about being accepted by the masses or considering the feelings of others, yet he feels truthfully in pain when he hurts someone, someone that's close to him, and that have done nothing to spite him. The real me is a fucking weirdo. <laughs> the real me is psychotic. He's a hypocrite. He's sociopathic. He's often apathetic, emotionless, sleep-deprived, narcissistic, uber-cynical, hypercritical, inconsiderate, and authentic, and far too intuitive and observant. And yet, the same person that knows all of this, that has termed all of this, has also showed me that all of my perceived flaws are okay. And I should accept them and myself, instead of living in this constant state of self-loathing and confusion about what general type of person I should be, scared to take the wrong role and go on the stage flopping around trying to find my footing, maybe I should just walk like the monster I am and face the audience that is everyone else. I see everyone is falling into one of two categories. There's me, and there's not me. I am always the most important. I always come first. If something endangers me without viable profit, I strongly refuse to do it. I think deep down everyone is like this, regardless of if they'd admit it or not. I choose to acknowledge, and frankly, I see myself as the main character of this game of life. Narcissistic? Yeah. To a degree. Do I believe it to be true? Yeah. Will anyone ever convince me otherwise? No. Because to convince me would be an implicit acknowledgement of me resenting myself and my past. And I wouldn't go back and redo any portion of my life, because those experiences made me who I am today. And that's someone I could not be any more proud of, it feels like. These are the lessons Japanese music, specifically those incorporated with anime, have taught me. And these are the life-changing stories that affect my life and keep me wanting more. And these are the lessons studio-produced TV, anime, and movies simply don't tell anymore. <laughs> I stopped watching anime because I feel like it's stopped growing with me, and as long as that's the case, I'll keep my one show a season and be the salty little shit I've always claimed to be. I think the music industry as a whole, specifically Eve, Kiyami, Wawaka, rest in peace, uh, Jean, Sol, Shinaringo, Nakamura Emi, and so many more that have influenced me to accept who I am today. And I thank music for being with me when the anime industry isn't, and I thank music ultimately saving me from depression's beastly appetite for more than 19 years. Current seasonals, which I'm defining as really damn near anything that's came out post 2016, bar a couple of exceptions in Haseki no Kuni, Kado, Kuzu no Honkai, aren't really made for me. I hear people around me at school being satisfied and indulging in the pool of seasonals day after day, but the anime and stories I wish to hear simply aren't told anymore. Productions like Akunohana, which focus on complacency and a psychotic look at sexual deviance with a horrifyingly realistic sense of timing and atmosphere is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Kato exposing me to the flaws of my own god complex by means of philosophy and emotional depictions of the consequences of such personality traits is something I likely won't ever see again. A Hachi story, which I would argue I most related to during my high school days, and maybe still to this point, is one of social and psychological suicide for the success of a society and the ease of mind of a cynical, restless subconscious that can't cope with establishing and losing meaningful connection to others. Kasherin taught me how to not accept death, but to appreciate its role in giving life 
itself meaning. Poon Poon is, maybe, horrifyingly enough, the closest I've ever felt to any work of fiction. The depiction of depression, the psychotic, murderous thoughts, having a female and a guiding angel very early on in life that I suddenly, without my control, just kind of lost connection to and I, some nights still kind of can't move on from. And even the damn image of Poon Poon, once he's nothing but a corrupted soul, heavily resembles a form of myself I've experienced in some life-changing nightmares where I'm just covered in Tara looking down at my body screaming as I feel as if my body's on fire. And I don't think I've ever felt as if anyone has understood me better than Poon Poon himself, let alone Inio Asano, who's the mangaka. These largely psychotic, antisocial, flawed, and crude stories and characters aren't what modern anime has been providing me. The medium is not set up for me to learn, and that truly disappoints me, and so I turn to all faithful music to teach me what I wish to know, and to put me further in tune with my psyche. And I really hope that soon, one day, anime may once again also help me in my pursuit for knowledge and psychological peace. This is Sudi Tootie. Deuces. <laughs>